I love when manufacturers use clear plastics for their products. Maybe it's because I'm a nerd and I like to see how things work. Or maybe it's because I'm a product of the 90s and clear plastics on electronics was all the rage at the time. No matter the reason, the availability of clear replacement shells for retro gaming consoles has been an absolute breath of fresh air. More recently, the NES clear replacement shell from Retro Game Restore piqued my interest and, well, let's just say I secured my pre-order. Now, After all, the Nintendo Entertainment System is one of my favorite consoles of all time, so you know, I just had to have it. After completing my pre-order, it dawned on me that I wouldn't have a matching controller, and that just didn't seem like it was acceptable to me. So I called up my buddy Dennis and we sought to correct this by making a matching clear NES controller to match that shell. And even better, we're going to open source all this so you can do it too. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More from them a little bit later on in the video. Now normally something like this, I would just go ahead and mold and cast a NES controller shell. And that's, you know, not a big deal for me. I happen to be quite good at it. But you see, I've got a bit of a problem right now. Which is namely that my resin casting studio is completely under construction. Anyway, considering how limited my access is to my resin casting goodies, I was thinking that we could attempt to 3D print it instead. Now, in order to 3D print this thing, we're gonna need a 3D model first. And for that, I called on my good buddy Dennis to help out. Dennis is a master at 3D modeling and reverse engineering, and he's a hell of a nice guy too. Dennis, say hi to these lovely people. Hi, lovely people. Anyway, while well, Dennis gets his calipers warmed up, and Fusion 360 launched, let's go ahead and rip open this OEM controller. Come on, let's get to it. So we're gonna use this OEM controller and I've had this one for quite a while and unfortunately I left it in my resin casting studio which means it's covered in dust. And of course that'll only add to the nastiness that already is the D-pad and buttons. I mean, they're pretty nasty from, I don't know, 30 years, 30 plus years of gamer gunk. So anyway, we're going to need to get all those buttons really well cleaned up because my plan is to still go ahead and do some resin casting on those buttons. Now again, I don't have access to all my normal goodies, but for something as small as these buttons, I think I can make it happen. Fortunately, getting into the NES controller is incredibly simple. It just requires six Phillips screws. So let's get those zipped out and yeah, let's assess what it looks like on the inside. And unfortunately, the inside of the shell is not much better. It looks like we got some nice soda and whatnot spilled in here at some point. But I guess the good news is I'm not as concerned about the shell as we'll be replacing that with the 3D print. So let's get those buttons out and let's start getting them all cleaned up. All right, I'm going to clean up these buttons and it's just a little bit of soapy water in here, a little bit of Dawn, and I'm just going to use this toothbrush. And like I said, goal is to get all that gamer gunk off of there, clean these up and make them as nice as I possibly can. And after just a few minutes, they're looking a heck of a lot better. At least all the nastiness is gone and, well, they're actually clean. But the problem is they're still pretty scratched up and honestly, they don't look great. So let's see if we can do something about that. So my basic plan to get rid of all the scratching is as follows. And this is unfortunately very time consuming and tedious. But basically, I'm gonna start by sanding these down with 600 grit sandpaper. Then I'm gonna go on to 1000 and then eventually on to 2000. And I'm going to go button by button, one at a time, sanding them all the way through. Once I hit 2000 grit sandpaper, I'm going to go ahead and take them over to the benchtop polishing machine and try to polish out the plastic. Now, this process seems easy in theory, but in reality it's incredibly difficult. Because you see, as you heat the plastic, it wants to warp and eventually damage itself. And of course you can't have that. So the goal is to work very slowly and carefully to try to achieve the shine that I'm looking for on each of the buttons. But I'll tell you what, while it was a ton of time and effort, I think it's completely worth it. And when we go ahead and mold these up, they should really, really yield some nice castings. But uh, I think we better go check in on Dennis and make sure he's doing okay. So I started off with just the base dimensions of the NES controller and then I pretty much worked my way from the bottom to the top. I went 
the extra mile here and added all the minor detail that the original one has as well. Some things you won't be able to see at all because it's internal, like the way the uh, pegs where the cord wraps around to strain relief, with how they look. Um, they are uh, they are ribbed pegs. <laughs> You'll never see that, but it, it's there, uh, like the original. With these kind of things, trying to make something as close as possible as I can, uh, which helps, you know, to digitally preserve our old hardware. But I really loved how this turned out. I hope you do as well. Okay, with that 3D model in my inbox, the next thing I'm going to do is attempt to 3D print this thing. And well, quite frankly, I don't believe that my equipment is going to be accurate enough to do this 3D printing. So I'm going to send it over to PCBWay and have them 3D print it for me. PCBWay has state-of-the-art manufacturing that they can do with their 3D printers and they're incredibly accurate so they can represent all the finest detail that's on this controller and really show off that hard work that Dennis did. So anyway, I'm going to get this loaded up over to them and sent over and even better, I can have it printed in clear resin and they will spray varnish finish it so it is completely transparent. Should look absolutely awesome. All right, with everything ordered, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing some resin casting. Now, I'm not gonna cover the mold making process. If you're interested in learning more about mold making, check out the card in the upper right hand corner as it's something I covered before in the past. But anyway, I'm kind of thinking for button colors, we go for almost like a smoky, transparent black and like a transparent blood red. Yeah, I think that looked really, really cool. So what I'm gonna do is mix up my resin. I've got a uh, nice crystal clear 202 from Smooth On that I'm using today and I'm gonna get that injected into the mold. All right, with that mold all loaded up with resin, we're gonna go ahead and take it over to the pressure pot and we're gonna place it in there and set it to 60 PSI so we get no bubbles in our casting. All right, and after all that curing for several hours, it's time to demold this thing. So we're gonna pop these rubber bands off and very gently crack open this mold. Dang, those turned out nice. All right, these are gonna fit right in with that clear theme controller. Oh, come on, seriously? While well, I'm trying to enjoy these brand new buttons? All right, I'll be right back. Yo, check out what just came in the mail. Let's go crack this thing open. Dang, check this thing out. I can't believe this. This looks so awesome. Man, it is way more clear than I was expecting. This looks fantastic. All right, and with all those parts finally here, we can get started on an assembly. Now getting this thing put together is pretty simple. We're just gonna put it back together the exact way we took it apart. Now there is one thing I do wanna point out as it relates to the 3D print, and specifically related to the A and B button. I did find them to be a little bit tight going in, which in a little bit of hindsight kinda makes sense considering the spray varnish finish we had put on there. So all I did is I took a little bit of a wooden dowel and some 600 grit sandpaper and just quickly sanded it out. It took just a matter of minutes and everything came together absolutely perfect. And man, does this thing ever look awesome. Well, I'll tell you one thing, looks a heck of a lot better than it did. Let's plug it in and see how it plays. Man, building out this NES controller was absolutely awesome and it turned out so good. After playing with this for several hours, I can hardly wait for that clear shell to come in so I can complete my clear NES project. I really wanna give a shout out and thank you to Dennis for both coming on the channel and sharing these files not only with me, but with all of you as well. If you're interested, there are links in the description below to the STL files used, as well as instructions to get it made at PCBWay if you're interested. Anyway, 
If nothing else, give him a follow over on Twitter and check out his YouTube page as he posts great content on both. Anyway, with that being said, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this one over here because I'm sure you're going to enjoy it too. Anyway, I'll catch you guys for the next one here soon.